Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my second class for the Learn and Share program with the town of Leonardtown and North End Gallery. And it's going to be based on this photo, which to me shows the poetry of a tree in winter against the bay. It's going to be a slight sunset, sun, late afternoon anyway, uh, background. But I just love the way that the trunks of this tree twist and turn. So I wanted to put that on canvas. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to use a square or a horizontal or even a vertical. This is 12 by 12. This is 11 by 14 or 14 by 11. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and start with putting a light wash to cover the white. Like this one, I've already done the wash. But um, I just don't like to paint right onto a white canvas. Some artists do, but a lot of artists want to have a, a slight tone on the canvas. Okay, the colors that I'm going to be using on my palette today are as follows. Titanium white, titanium buff, black, cadmium green light, sap green, viridian, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson permanent, cronacridone magenta, cadmium red light, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow pale, Naples yellow, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Then I have my cup full of linseed oil. So I'm going to pick up a large brush, dip it into the Gamsol, and because it's a red, reddish sky, I'm going to put some red, make kind of a gray, very loose. So, and this is kind of an option. Some people will do it, and some people just, like I said, prefer to use a white canvas. It's coming out kind of brown looking, which is okay. Covering it as quickly as I can. And I'll go over it with a paper towel so that it's a little lighter. So I'm just making little quick strokes with this brush, with the side of the brush. I'm using the side of the brush because I want to get it down quickly. If I did it like stroking, I probably wouldn't be able to get it on so quickly. Now, I'm going to go over that and take a towel so that it's much smoother and it's still light. It's still a light background. I want it to be semi-dry. I don't want it to be dripping. So the paper towel is very helpful to brush that away. Now I need to lightly draw in the design of the tree. And it, I may have to wipe it a couple of times or the design, I should say, of the whole canvas. So the shoreline kind of goes up to at an angle. It's 
So that line is just to indicate. Now I'm working on the, in, that line is to indicate the shoreline. And I'll do another line to indicate the horizon or the other side of the shore. I want to make it a straight line, straight as possible for starters. This is a fairly thick trunk. So that's going to be part of the difficulty. I mean, I don't have to do it exactly as it is. So it's basically my inspiration. And there's a large opening to the trunk right about here. And a big branch that comes across. And if that's too thick where I just did that, I can fix that later. So that it divides here and goes up. lumpy thing here. And now the same branch. See that divides. And that branch comes across. And now we begin the twisting of the tree. Now I'm using the back of the brush. And this is that branch that came across in the middle. And it's kind of parallel to the shore for a few minutes. And I'm using paint that is very thin so that if I make a mistake, I could just take the paper towel and wipe it off or dip it in some Gamsol and wipe it off. This paint will dry fairly quickly because it's so, got so much of that solvent in uh, Gamsol in it. Now, we have another big limb that comes right across here, creating a little triangle right, right in this area. And it's coming off at an angle, coming up at an angle. And it Then it goes straight up. And then we have a curve up here, followed by another curve just above it. They kind of look like they merge up at the top. But then the first branch goes on and then breaks off into a lot of smaller branches, which I'm not sure that I want to put in all of the smaller branches. But I'm going to put in a few now. And then I can always take them out.
There are a lot of dips in this, creating some interesting parallel lines. Or not parallel, but well, here's a parallel right here. I'm not sure if this particular branch comes off of this limb or if it comes off the one at the top, but it's, it makes it interesting. And going back to where I started, we'll work on this. And these are fairly thick limbs. It's an interesting tree. I think it's an old fruit tree. I think it's probably an apple tree. I will, my neighbors are away. It's their tree. I will ask them when they return, or maybe send them an email. They go for the winter. They go to Florida. Now I'm going to just fill in some of these limbs. Just to make them a little darker. It's kind of like making a road map. With very thin earth tone paint. So I'm continuing to fill it in just as I said, as a road map. And this, this limb is very thin, I mean very thick. It's all going to be very dark. It's going to blend in with itself. In the photograph, it's very difficult to see where these limbs end. There's also a magnolia tree where, who, which is the branches of which are interfering when I look at it with being able to see where these limbs end. I'm not going to put that tree in. I mean, you, when you're using a photograph, I think this is kind of important. You don't need to copy the photograph exactly unless it's a really fantastic photograph. I know um, people who made a lovely painting, but yet put something that didn't relate to the scene, but put it in because it was a photograph, in the photograph, where it would have been better if they just left it out. Yeah. You, you really need to look at the photograph and analyze it before using it. I probably could take a lot of different angles of this tree and come up with some more interesting paintings. It's just great. And of course, without the leaves on it, it's um, easier to understand, to see and understand. Now, I'm just going to think about some smaller branches. I don't want to emphasize them. And I may end up taking them out, not including them. problem is with putting the smaller branches in, you feel like you have to continue the thing.
some places where the paint is dripping, which is not a big deal, but it's better not to have it do that.